We've been waiting 42 years for this day. For the last 41 years, the Grand National has been launched down in London. Today, it's come to Liverpool, the home of the great race, and the weights have been unveiled. I have them here in my hand, from Bristol de May down to Van Gogh de Granny. Our trainers are plenty, owners are plenty here, giving their views on what's going to happen when we come back to Aintree on April the 6th. Here with Nigel Twiston Davis. You won the national twice. You've got nine entries in the race. Are you keen to win it again? Oh, very keen. Yes. Yeah. No. It's 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 the highlight of the of the season for me. And you've got Bristol De May, who's top weight, but he's actually been dropped five pounds to encourage more others to get in the handicap. Well, yes. Yeah. No, it's nice to you know to give a decent horse a chance, and uh, hopefully he'll be in the race. He goes to the Gold Cup first. Is that right? He does. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's a good form. Uh, and Go Conquer looked to run a good trial for this at uh, Doncaster last time. He really did. Um, you know, he, he's in great form, and, and um, we've got Bally Optic as well, who's also got a good chance. Um, you know, and further down the weights, I don't know whether they get in. Um, Bally Arthur, another great horse. So you could have quite a big team in the end. Well, we could do. Yes, it'd be interesting. Impossible question, but at this stage, which of you was the most likely to give you that, that third national win? Oh, blimey. Well, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Any of them could do. I'm here with Gordon Elliott, who could be a key man in this year's Grand National. You've got umpteen entries. How many of them do you think he might run? Uh, obviously, we, we, I think we've entered about 21 or two. Um, if I could get 10 or 15 into it, I'd be very happy. Yeah. I'd run as many as I can. Definitely, uh, we could go into double figures. Running 10 or more horses in the Grand National, that sounds like quite an enterprise logistically. Ah, listen, we're, we're used to it every day of the week going race. I've got good staff working for me, um, so we'll see what happens. But it's clearly a race that means an awful lot to you. It is, yes, yeah, the biggest steeplechase in the world is the race everyone wants to win, so we've won it twice now. It'd be nice to do it three times. What chance that Tiger Roll could make it uh, back up last year's win? Yeah, definitely. He'd run in the race. You know, it's obviously a big ass to go back uh, obviously uh, and win it a second year, but he's in very good form and uh, I couldn't be happier with him at home. And what's the plan with him between now and then? he run in the buying hurdle on Sunday and then he go for the cross country race in Cheltenham. All being well, then uh, he got to entry. And another one who took the eye, Dunikos, winner at yeah. down the other day. He won well, he, he, he jumps and he stays and he likes a bit of OK ground as well, which is good. Would he go straight to entry or what would be the plan? I'd imagine he goes straight to entry now, yeah. And, and of your other 20 entries, any others you'd pick out as ones who would go there with a the good chance? Got, I haven't got a chance to look at it properly, but uh, when I get home and look at it all tonight, I'll see, but we'll, we'll run plenty in it. Patrick Mullins, you've got a, a big team in the race. Pleasant company, went so close last year. I know, it was heartbreaking. Um, we just needed another yard. I mean, David gave him a fabulous ride. He rides that track so well, he won on the rule the world. And we have to come back and try to right that wrong this year. It, it's not going to be easy, um, but it is a race that you see horses that place and they come back and run well again. And, you know, it's a specialist race. We're planning his whole season towards it. And he's got a nice weight, you know, he's, he's there under 11 stone. We can't argue with that. Which other of your entries should be looking out for as well, do you think? Uh, we'll obviously have a bit of a soft spot for Rad Vinden. Um, he won the National on Chase in Cheltenham. He proves he stays. Um, he's a good jumper. He's a second season novice, which you know means he could possibly be unexposed. He has a bit of age. He's 11, but because he, he missed a bit of time after he got injured as a novice hurdler, but he's lightly raced. Um, again, he's under 11 stone mark. I prefer he had a bit more weight um, from a personal point of view, but we've trained his whole season towards again towards entry and um, he's not the biggest horse but he's a very economical jumper I think he ticks a lot of the boxes obviously total recall running the race last year yes total recall could obviously be probably the best handicapped of them um, he has a huge amount of class he, he was going to run very well in the Gold Cup before he fell at the third last but he didn't enjoy himself there last year he made a mistake at the first stitch the third fence and lost his confidence so you know you're taking a chance that he can go back get his confidence um, and that's hard to guarantee that he will do that. But look, if he does, he's probably well handicapped. Yeah, Black Cordon's got 10 stone 11. That's fine. He, he, you know, he's not very big. He wouldn't want to be carrying 11 stone 10 or 11 stone 12 or something like that. So that's a nice weight for him if we go. The weight I really like is 10 stone 1. Give me a copper. Unexposed horse. Not a lot of experience, but... He's a very good jumper, very nice horse who's improving. He'll go to Cheltenham for the ultimate handicap chase. It's funny enough, when I was with David Barons, that's the route we did with Seagram. And if he comes out of that, then we'll head off to Aintree with a lovely weight. And of course, he won the Grand National before with Neptune Collange. Be pretty chuffed to win it again, I should think. That's a great race to win. Amazing day times with Neptune Collange. Um, that was like uh, a little while back. It'd be nice to do it again, yeah.
here with Joe Tizard. Your yard's got some interesting horses in the Grand National. Talk us through the pick of them. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the pick would, um, would would probably be Ultra Gold and Royal Vacation, to be honest. Um, Ultra Gold's won the last two Toppums. Um, hopefully he'll, he'll get in this. He ran. I mean, we've been testing him over the trip. He ran over three mile five at Warwick last time. Um, and, you know, he's run four times over the big fences and, and hasn't been out of the first three. So, so we're looking forward to, to running him in it. Um, and then Royal Vacation is a grade one winner who, who struggled a bit last year, but certainly bounced right back to his best and seems in, in good nick with himself now. Um, we'll love the trip. Um, as would Elegant Escape, really. You know, Elegant Escape sort of concentrating on the Gold Cup first. He's he sort of, with his handicap mark, earned himself a chance to run in that. And then, um, and then, and then we'll make a decision on this after them. But Welsh National Day, he looked, he looked a proper possible Grand National horse, didn't he? Oh, there's no doubt. There's no doubt. Um, he, he ticks a lot of boxes for it. Um, it's, it's just at the moment, like he's now got himself to this stage for a Gold Cup, and, and we want to concentrate on that and have that as our main goal this season, and, and give him his chance there, and, and then then work after that. You know, it's only it's only a month. A lot depends on what happens in March, but. Um, I'm most certainly looking forward in future years. He's um, he ticks a lot, a lot of boxes for it. Here with Warren Greatrex, you've got Mr. Approach in the race. Already got experience of entry in the fences. Yeah, um, we ran him in the in the Beecher Chase earlier in the season. Um, just a yeah, it was a bit of a nightmare. He got left at the start. Um, probably made up too much ground too early, but got in a nice rhythm. Jumped around the fence as well. And um, yeah, no, he ran, a, he ran a hell of a race to be sixth. Um, he's come out of that well, and we were always going to hold back now until the weights come out. Um, obviously, 10 1, 61st on the list, so he should get a run. Um, yeah, yeah, all systems go. Um, where, where do you think we'll see him next before entry? Um, well, he's in the Ida a week, on, uh, week Saturday, um, but I'd say probably favourite is the Premier Chase up at Kelso on the, I think it's the 2nd of March. Um, that will give him plenty of time and um, it's a good good prize money and then we can put him away and get him ready for entry. And assuming all goes well in his prep run, is he the sort of horse that could go really close in a national? Well, look, he's, he's been to Cheltenham twice, he's been four, second in the four-miler, he's, he's won a Kim Muir, um, he loves a big occasion, he stays, he travels, he's got a bit of class, big strong horse, um, very brave. Um, so yeah, look, I've, I've never, I've only had two runners in it, um, so I wouldn't know what it needs to win it, but you know, from watching it for all the years I have, he definitely ticks a lot of the boxes, yeah. Here with Martin Greenwood, who's framed the weights for his very first Grand National. How have you enjoyed it? It's been thoroughly entertaining. Um, an honour and a privilege to do a race I've always wanted to do. Um, yeah, thoroughly enjoyed it. What's been the trickiest horses to, to assess? Uh, two to pick out, Bristol de Mai, the top weight, and uh, Ender Bulger's Orving Nat, um, starting with Bristol. Obviously, we've had a history of compression over the years, trying to entice the better horses into the race, which has obviously worked. Um, no handicapper wants a horse out of kilter, but I'd rather have one at the top rather than ten potentially out of the weights, so that, that was my reasoning. If Bristol de Mai happens to win, uh, it will be an all-time performance. He's a pound lower than Sunny Bay nine, uh, 20 years ago and slightly higher than Many Clouds a few years ago. Uh, Ender's horse is a different kettle of fish. Um, Cross-country horse, really good record over the Banks courses at Punchestown where he's give Josie's orders um, weight and a beating and that's no mean feat in those races. And obviously with Tiger Roll, Bless My Wings, etc., coming into the race via cross-country. I think mean, he's quite an interesting runner. So you fear you might let him in a bit lightly? Well, I wouldn't say that. Um, his regulation rating would be about 145. His cross-country rating high 150s. I've gone somewhere in the middle, trying to fit him in around Josie's orders where he would be if he was in the weights. So he's higher than his Irish mark. He's the one horse who's clearly higher than his official mark. I still think he's a very interesting runner. And, and more generally, to handicap the weights for a race we've all grown up watching and cheering on from the TV, that must be a tremendous privilege. Absolutely. Um, I've been watching racing since a very early age. I was a Pill Garlic fan, for instance, for those of you old enough to remember that horse. So um, to end up being in charge of the weights for the world's biggest steeplechase is indeed an honour.